I was homeschooled growing up. This happened when I was about 14, I think. I'm the oldest among my siblings, and I have two younger brothers and two younger sisters. One time, I was going through a regular school day. We could do school sort of wherever we wanted in the house. On this particular day, I remember that I was in my bedroom, which was on the first floor. I was sitting at my desk, which faced the wall. My siblings and mom were in the living room or kitchen, where she was teaching them. I was working on some type of assignment, I don't remember exactly what. I was trying to get it done though, because once I got stuff done, school would be over for the day. That was the nice part about being homeschooled for me, because I could get all my stuff done in like two or three hours sometimes. So as I was racing to complete my assignments and bring it to my mom, I got really focused. But randomly, as I was working, I suddenly heard the sound of a knock at my window. At least, that's what it sounded like. My bedroom window faced the backyard, and there were a few bushes and trees nearby. My desk was facing the complete opposite way, so I had to turn around to see it. I stopped what I was doing and looked. When I did, I just barely saw something moving out of sight. It seemed as though someone had been at the window. I didn't get a look at them at all. I couldn't even tell what part of them I saw for less than a second. Maybe their arm? I just could tell that somebody had been at the window. It was really creepy because it was broad daylight and our neighborhood was not known for random prowlers. So I got up and went over to the window and looked out. I didn't see anything at first. I looked all around the yard, at least what I could see of it. I couldn't see everything, but I didn't see a sign of a person back there. They would have had time to move out of the backyard though. I figured that it was somebody walking through our backyard to get to another one or something. Maybe it was even somebody trying to break into our house, but they saw that someone was home and went away. I found that to be unlikely, but still was a creepy thought. After looking around for a minute or two, I went back to my desk to continue working. I went back to my homework and soon was focused on that again. I would say about five or 10 minutes went by. When I was still at my desk, I got a bad feeling. It was the feeling like I was being watched or something. I was just creeped out and I figured that I was still spooked from what happened earlier. So I stopped what I was doing and turned around. I looked to the window again, but this time there was a man right outside. He had dark hair and was just staring at me from the other side of the window. I was so surprised that I couldn't move for a second. I really didn't think that the person would come back. I didn't know what he wanted or what he was doing here. The man stayed there, just staring at me with minimal expression on his face. This went on for what felt like a long time, probably about 20 seconds. Then I finally got up. I ran out of my bedroom and went for the living room. My mom was there with all my siblings and she was working with them as they did their school. She saw me come running in, and I said that there was a man at my window. My mom came back to my room with me, but when we got there, the guy was gone. We looked out all the windows, and after I described what happened, my mom called the police. They came out and searched our property, as well as looking around the neighborhood, but they never found the guy. He must have actually left for good that time. I spoke with police for a bit, and then they left. For the next month at least, I didn't study alone in my bedroom. I also covered my windows almost all the time. The whole situation really freaked me out, but luckily nothing like that ever happened again. I'm not sure why the guy came to our yard and looked in my window. I'm just glad that he never returned. When I was a kid, we moved around quite a bit. My dad was always changing locations for his job, and I sort of got used to it. We would move sometimes multiple times a year, and because of this, my sister and I did homeschool. It was much easier than having to keep changing schools all the time. Overall, I enjoyed it for the most part. We would be home during the day, but one time, something really creepy happened. I remember that it was not that long after we moved into another new house. We lived in a number of different kinds of houses, but most of them were pretty average. We never had a really big house or a really small house either. This one had two floors and a basement and was pretty standard. One day I was doing school in the family room and my mom was upstairs with my sister. I believe that I was maybe 10 or 12 and my sister would have been about four or five years old. She obviously required more attention than I did. So I was by myself at the moment. The family room was at one end of the house and I was sitting on the couch we had in there. The basement door was at the end of that room. 
As I was looking down at my book, I heard the sound of the basement door opening. At first, I assumed that it was my mom. I mean, who else could it be? And I was pretty invested in what I was reading, so I wasn't giving it much thought. But after I remember about a second or two, I realized that my mom was upstairs with my sister. That couldn't be her. Then I looked over and suddenly felt really nervous. When I looked to the door, I saw somebody start to enter the family room. They were maybe 20 feet away from me. I jumped up from the couch and ran out of the room. I'm not sure if the person saw me or not, but I never saw them. I just saw their arm opening the door and then them starting to walk out. It looked to be a man, but beyond that, I couldn't tell anything because I never got a look at his face. I ran to the other side of the house and I wanted to go upstairs, but for some reason, I panicked and I went into a bathroom instead. I'm not really sure what I was thinking looking back. I just know that I got in there and I locked the door. When I did, I felt a little bit safer, but I still didn't know what to do. I had no phone and didn't want to call for help. I heard footsteps moving through the family room not that far away, but I didn't hear them for long. As it was, I couldn't hear very well being locked in the bathroom. But after like 10 minutes of not hearing anything, I had no idea what to do. I was worried for my mom and sister that were upstairs. I thought that I would have heard it if the intruder went upstairs, but I wasn't 100% sure, so I decided to go up and see. I gathered up the courage and then slowly and quietly opened up the bathroom door. When I did, everything seemed quiet and normal. The staircase really wasn't that far away. I ran for it and then went up the stairs. I then went down the hallway and found my sister's bedroom. The door was mostly shut, but not all the way. I went inside to find my mom reading a book to my sister. I was glad to see that they were okay, and they seemed to have no idea that anybody else was downstairs. I told them what I had seen. At first, they couldn't believe it, but I also wasn't the type of kid to make stuff up. We didn't know where the man had gone, so we all stayed upstairs and my mom called the police. Then we all waited up there. The police arrived about 10 minutes later. In the time that we were upstairs, we didn't hear anything at all. I kind of thought that the person had left. The police came inside and searched the entire house. Surprisingly, they found a man hiding in the basement. He was arrested and did not say anything. We were all very shocked, but also very relieved that he was now gone. We didn't know how long he had been down there or how he had even got in. The basement in our house was rarely used and mostly just extra storage for us. Nobody went down there on a regular basis, so it was a good place for him to hide. I'm not sure why he came upstairs or what his plans were. Luckily, nothing like that ever happened again. This happened years ago when I was a kid. I was homeschooled up until the time that I went to high school. This happened when I was 10 years old. During this time, I lived with my parents and sister in a pretty average house. Our neighborhood was also what I would describe as average. I always considered it to be safe, and I would guess that my parents did as well. The typical school day for me was to work through these books that I had. They were basically the same kind of books that you would do in school. Instead of sitting in class though, I would just do them at home. I would read the chapter and then do the worksheet that was at the end of it. My mom was my teacher and would assign me what problems to do and stuff. She would also grade me and help explain things to me that I didn't understand. Then she would give me tests as well. So one day, my dad was at work and I was doing school. I really don't remember why, but my mom went someplace with my sister. It might have been just to the grocery store or something. I don't recall why I didn't go with though, but I didn't. I was just old enough at that age to be able to stay home by myself. So I remember that my mom left and I was sitting in the living room at this table that we had in there. I was doing some school and working on some type of worksheet. It was probably like 10 minutes after they left and sometime in the late morning. The table that I was sitting at was sort of at the end of the living room. I remember that I was just looking around and I noticed something in one of the windows. It was a window near the far end of the room and I saw that somebody was looking inside of it. It appeared to be a man but I didn't get a good look at him at all. He was not looking in my direction that I was aware of. The window that he was looking in was at the front of our house. I was really creeped out by this. I got up and walked over to the window to look. When I did, he was completely gone. I didn't see the man in our front yard or in the street. I wasn't quite sure where he went, 
but I was just glad that he was gone now. So after that, I just went back to the table and continued my school. I'm not sure exactly how long I was doing that, maybe like five minutes at most. Then, out of nowhere, I heard the back door to our house opening. I was so confused at first, but then I quickly realized what was happening. The man I saw in the window must have went around to the back and entered. I didn't realize that the back door had been left unlocked, but apparently it was. Now, from where I was in that moment, I was at the edge of the living room and the dining room. Connecting to the dining room in the back of the house was the kitchen where the back door was. So the man entering the house was out of my sight, but just barely. When I heard footsteps entering the house, I quickly got up and ran into the living room. This was farther away and more out of sight of the guy. We had carpet in the entire living room, so luckily I probably didn't make much noise. I wasn't really thinking, but I knew I had to get out of there or hide. I just quickly went to the couch and then hid underneath it. The couch was large and had a decent amount of space below it, plus I was small. It was one of my favorite hiding places for hide and seek when I was younger. So after I got under the couch, I tried to be as quiet as I could. I heard footsteps drawing closer and I got really nervous. He soon approached the living room. That was when I realized that I had to call the police. But back then, cell phones were not as common at all. I certainly didn't have one as a 10 year old. So the man walked just inside the living room and I was really freaked out. It sounded like he was walking closer, but not directly towards me. He seemed to walk through the living room and then towards the hallway. That led to some of the bedrooms. I felt a little bit safer when the footsteps got farther away, but I was still terrified. I looked around under the couch and the only thing that was in there was an extra blanket and some extra pillows for the couch. I moved myself over towards the back corner of the couch underneath it. That's when I had an idea. On the right side of our couch, near where I was, there was a side table, and on that side table was a corded house phone. It was one of the several that we had in the house back then. I knew if I could just get the phone, I could call the police, but I didn't want to risk leaving my hiding place. I also didn't want to make any noise. I lifted up the trim that went around the bottom of the couch. The cord for the phone was somewhat long and it went over the edge of the back side of the side table a little bit. I took the blanket from under the couch and moved it up against the wall and behind the table a little. Then I reached and grabbed the cord from the back and yanked on it. This pulled the phone from its place and it fell onto the floor. It hit the blanket which prevented it from making nearly as much noise by hitting the wall or floor. Then I grabbed the phone and was able to make a call. It was also lucky that our model of phone allowed you to dial on the actual phone and the number pad was not on the phone holder. So I hit 911 and then mostly covered the phone with the blanket so there wouldn't be any noise. I was able to just hear enough by pressing my ear to the blanket near the ear part of the phone. When the 911 operator asked me what was going on, I whispered that somebody broke into my house. I said that I was hiding underneath the couch and gave our address. I was told that the police were on the way and to stay hidden. They stayed on the line with me and it made me feel a little bit better. Meanwhile, I hadn't heard anything inside of our house in a while. I knew that they had gone towards the bedrooms, but beyond that, I didn't know what was happening. A few minutes went by and I remained hidden where I was. I still heard nothing. It wasn't until a couple of minutes after that that I heard a noise coming from down the hallway. I couldn't tell exactly what it was, but it ensured me that the person was still here and still down the hall. They seemed to be in one of the bedrooms. I kept hiding and it felt like forever waiting for the police to get there. The person stayed where they were for the next few minutes. Then, at last, I heard some noise out front. The police were finally here. I heard some movement down the hall and then footsteps. The man started moving back from the hallway to the living room, but he wasn't in the living room for long and quickly moved back out towards the kitchen. It was a huge relief to hear that. He then left the house quickly, but the police got up with him not long after. They must have seen him fleeing. I finally came out from underneath the couch. The first thing I remember was seeing some police in the front yard, and then I went over and opened up the front door. I was told that they located a man in the backyard. An officer came inside and spoke with me, and then they contacted my mom. She got home a short time later. It was a very crazy experience. After that, I wasn't left home alone for a long time, and I didn't want to be either. Looking back, I can't believe that that situation worked out as well as it did. 
I was really scared, but I was able to do what I had to do. I feel very lucky that it turned out the way that it did.